Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. Hi. Hi, my friend. I am Ibrahim, Turkish guy from Russia. Hey, Ibrahim. You remember? Sure, I remember. Sure. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm all right. So, what do you want to say to us? Uh, actually, I'm preparing a video. Uh, I need again uh, some uh, reference. Uh, I want to ask you maybe we have some idea. I'm sure you have something about it. Uh, you know, um, Mohammed children hmm. and uh, his wife Hatija. Hmm. I don't believe that uh, Mohammed has a child uh, from Hatija or others. Yes, that's true. Uh, yes, that's true. He don't have. Uh, Hatija uh, was married uh, twice before uh, Muhammad, right? Right. Yeah, uh, and uh, I want to prove it. Uh, how can I find this reference? Do you have any reference about it? Well, if you go, if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran confirm that Muhammad he don't have really uh, any children. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You see, when uh, 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 when you go in the Quran. In chapter 33 verse number 40 it says yeah Muhammad is not the father of any of your mm -hmm. men but the messenger of Allah and the seal of the Prophet okay you see here but the father about step, uh, step children uh, yeah hold on you see, the yeah. Muslim they will say to you here, he's talking. They are talking about Muhammad. He don't have male children. That's that's true. It says male children there. However, mm -hmm. however, a child who is a son of a child, which means if Muhammad he have a grandson, he is a child. He's a man, and he became a man. That will make Muhammad a father of any of the men because he is a grandfather. Is that correct? Mm hmm. Listen carefully. If I have, let's say, I have only a daughter, and then you, if somebody asks me, do you have any child, a male child? I would say no. Then my daughter, she got married and she gave birth to a child, and this child became a man. He's a boy. He became a man. Then I have a male child. Why? Because I am the grandfather of that man. So mm -hmm. if the children of the daughters who Muslims they claim they are the daughters of Muhammad, especially Fatima, like the Shia, they believe only Fatima was the daughter of Muhammad. The Sunni, they, many of them, they disagree, disagree. The Muslim, they are not sure about who is who, but the majority, they agree that Fatima is the only daughter of Muhammad. If Fatima is the daughter of Muhammad, really, and I believe it's, she is not, then how, he, how the Quran says, Muhammad was not the father of any of your men. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad he have no seeds. Are you getting my but point? But I know that this uh, ayat uh, because of the Zaid wife and Zaid. This no, no, no. This, this is not about Zaid now. This is not about Zaid. This is about Muhammad. Uh, is he is the seal of the prophet for the Arab? You see here that you see the word the seal of the prophet. If we go in different verse in the Quran, always always learn how to connect the dots together. You know. If you remember the Quran speak that God he made Jacob and Isaac and from their seeds is the prophethood all mm -hmm. right yeah I know okay let us go there <clears throat> here we go Chapter six, verse number eighty-four is 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 good, but we wanna we wanna give more reference uh, to the story here. Let us see. There is many verses in the Quran confirming that from the seeds of certain person is the prophet and this is one of an example chapter 29 verse number 27 it says carefully let us read together mm -hmm. and we gave abraham 
Isaac and uh, 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 Isaac and Jacob and or denied among his brogni br the brotherhood or the prophethood sorry and revelation okay so the Quran confirmed that from the children of Jacob and the children of Isaac is the prophethood then how hmm. Muhammad he can explain to us that he is not from the children of Jacob and the children of Isaac yet he is a prophet that is a contradiction however Muhammad no, is telling he's coming from uh, Ismail yeah but even here the Quran confirmed that from the children of Ishmael there's no uh, there's no prophet the child the prophet is coming only you see did you ask yourself here why Allah did yes. not say why Allah did not say and if and we gave Abraham Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob he did not say why why why, why he dropped the name of Ishmael what happened mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. He dropped the name of Ishmael, but Ishmael is the elder is the elder in the family. He should be the most important. You see, in the Middle East, in the in the Eastern tradition, the elder in the family he is almost equal to the father. Like when my father he passed away, then my older brother he will be the one who replaces his place, and then I will be I will be uh, 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 like by the culture I should be obedience to my elder brother. Now, why Ishmael is dropped here? Because he is not from those who from his, their from their seeds will be prophethood The prophethood is only from Isaac and Jacob Muhammad in order to cover his problem He said here in the other verse that Muhammad was not the father of any of your men He is the seed of the prophet He was trying to say that if from because all the prophets from their seeds there is Somebody would inherit the same as what happened to Jacob and Isaac and etc. So, because of from the seed of those, the prophethood came. In my case, I am the last prophet for the Arab and nothing from my seed, for I have no men children from my side. And the men children here is, is not only about him directly having a child, he is a man, it's about he not even being a grandfather of anyone. For all the daughters he have is not his daughters. Same time here, the word seal of the prophet have another, another meaning, which is Muhammad, he is the seal who confirm the prophets who came before him. But here, just to uh, uh, to confirm to you what I'm trying uh, trying to explain to you, that for sure Muhammad, he have no children. You know, if you remember, Muhammad, he was accused by a man that he cannot have kids. And this is in the Quran. But <clears throat> I know that uh, actually uh, Muslim uh, talk about that uh, he had a son from uh, Maria, no, Ibrahim no. or that's Kasim a lie, my friend. Even Aisha, Maria. if you have my book, you will see it's it, it, Aisha. She said to him, "I told you many times, he don't look like you." In the Shani Akahul Abtar, chapter one o eight, verse number three, a guy who keeps saying to him, "You are cut off, you are cut off." The Muslim they say. Because he have no male children, this is why he's cut off. That's a lie. You see, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if if being cut off is going to be considered this way because you didn't have a male child, then how the Quran is speak about Mary, which is a woman who gave a child birth without a father. The man here, he said to him, To thee we have granted the fount. This fount, by the way, Al Kawthar, obviously it's a sperm. I mean, otherwise, a guy he is accusing Muhammad that he cannot have kids. What fount? I mean, what this connection? What the connection of somebody? What is the fount? Any Muslim can tell me. A person he said to me, You cannot have kids, Christian prince. Oh, obviously, you are not good in bed. Let us make it simple. And then my God, he says to me, we granted you the fount. What fount? What, what is the connection between this fount of liquid and a guy who cannot have sex or who cannot have kids? Therefore, therefore, to the Lord turn in a prayer and sacrifice. And the Muslim, remember, they said to you, we don't believe in sacrifice. For he who has, uh, uh, the one who accused you to be cut off, he is the one cut off. Cut off from what? Cut off from having children. 
So if Muhammad was having kids and he was able to have kids, well, it's still possible, even if he have a children, they are females, he will not be cut off because still he is marrying more women and he is marrying young women and they might get a bread net. But That's because point, Muhammad, right? after all the women he married, did you ask yourself why only one woman? She gave birth to Muhammad? All women gave six children and others? No. How no nobody, nobody, nobody. This, this is the question. Why? Okay, if, if Khadija, she have those children. Let us say, the Muslims, they say they are the children of Khadija. But then how come Aisha should not have a children? Zainab, she did not have a children. Hafsa, she did not have a children. All the women Muhammad he married from, none of them was able to give him either a daughter or a child. Correct? But what about Maria? And, and all the confirmation, they confirmed that this is not his son. Even Aisha, she confirmed that his son. Omar al-Khattab, he went to kill. Uh -huh. Ibn Juraj, who is the cousin of Mar Mary the cook, because they say to him, obviously, the guy he looked like the, the child, he looked like him. So Omar he went there to kill him, but the guy he said showed him that he had no penis. Which mean uh, which story. which mean Muhammad he cut he cut he cut the penis of the slave. And can you show me this reference, please? We don't want to change the topic now. We can we can make a video about it, specific video about it, so you you, you can collect the whole thing. You see, the, to um, I, the topic today is about a human sacrifice. I want to, and I want to focus on it. But no, we can. It's important. This uh, I know. I'm sorry. I changed your topic, but I need to find. This is, do you have such video in, in uh, YouTube? I am sure because I have thousands of videos. I don't know how many videos I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I know it's hard to find it. Yeah. Anyway, maybe if we if we finish this one, maybe I can I can uh, get you some reference before we before we finish today. All okay. Right? Thank you very All much, right. my Take friend. Care, Thank you. All right. Have a good time. Bye. All right. Yeah, for sure. For sure, Muhammad, he don't have, uh, uh, he don't have kids. The funny, the Muslims, they don't ask themselves simple questions. How oh, Muhammad, he did marry all those women, only one woman, she gave him children and they are females. All of them? Do you know how many women Muhammad he slept with? Let me see if I can find you the hadith right away. All right. Here we go. This is the reference, my friend. Go. But you need to translate it now. I don't know what to do. I mean, uh, this is in Arabic. This is the book of Tafsir, Tafsir al Quran, to al by Al Qummi. All right. It says, this is, it. this is the chapter 49, verse number six, came about supposedly about Mary the Copt. It says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu in jaakum fasikum binaba fatabayanu. Oh, who you believe if somebody bad he came to you with bad news investigate first you know and then what happened uh, uh you will see here and 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 that happened because aisha she said to the prophet that ibrahim he is not from you which means he is not your son he is from juraj al qubti he is from juraj as i told you Al Qubti, he is the cousin of Mary. فغضب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال لأمير المؤمنين عليه السلام. So the the prophet he was angry and he said to Ali, go and get me the head of this guy. Get me the head of Juraj, who is a slave he owned. So Ali he took the sword and he went to him, and then uh, he said to him. I, I sacrifice myself by my sacrifice sacrifice to you my father and my mother O prophet of Allah I'm going to do it let me go then he went to this guy and he wanted to kill him and then uh, uh, it says Ibrahim so he came to the to the room where Umm Ibrahim was which means Mary the Qub and then uh, so he jumped over and then he found Ibn Juraj and Ibn Juraj he ran away 
and he jumped into a palm tree then he get close to him he said to him get down he said he said to him please Ali please Ali you know for the sake of Allah man there is nobody here why you want to do that uh, he said to him inni majboob which mean his penis is cut off then he left up his address to show him that he have no penis then Ali he came back to the Messenger of Allah and he told him this guy he have no penis <laughs> why Ali she is saying to him why why Aisha she is saying to him that this is not your son this is the son of Juraj because the guy he don't look like him at all and she knew that Muhammad is a an important man he cannot have kids and the same story by the way goes for uh, for the guy who accused Muhammad that he have his penis is not functioning you know uh, if you go to the end of the Quran you go to the chapter of al kawthar you will see that the people they accuse him and Allah he promised him a, a, a river of a sperm in paradise the Muslim they say ah, this is not a sperm this is a river a guy accusing a guy that his penis is not functioning what is the fountain and what is the river will be given to him I mean somebody accused me that my penis is not working you give you promise me a river for that what, what is the connection any Muslim can give me the connection From his narration, the authority of the Abbas said that the interpretation of Allah saying, Lu, we have given you abundance. Lu, we have given you the abundance. He says, he have given you, O Muhammad, abundant good, include the abundant good in the Quran. What does that mean? Nothing. And then he referred, Al-Kawthar is a river in paradise. Muhammad will get a river in the paradise. What, what, what he would do with the river in the paradise? Oh, the river for Muhammad alone, what he would do with it? The guy is accusing him that he, his penis is not working. Allah, he responds saying, I will give you a river. What is the connection? Imagine somebody accused you that you have no teeth. And then Allah, he says to you, I will give you an apple. Okay. Uh, what? Why he want to give him a river? If you go over to verse number three, you will see the guy saying it clearly that you cannot have children. Lu is the insulter, the one who despise, despise you. About what? That he don't have children. He will be without family. The guy, he have many children. What without family? The guy, he have, he have a big family. He have many children. He will be without family, wealth, or any goodness. He will not be mentioned after his death. Well, obviously, this is a lie because you just made him eternal. You see, guys, how stupid the Quran. If this guy will not be mentioned after his death, so why we are talking about him now? Do you understand, people? Do you understand how stupid this is? How the Quran say that he will not be mentioned after after his death, and we are talking about him now? We are talking about who? We are talking about the guy who insult Muhammad. So how he will not be mentioned? You just made him. You just made every stupid Muslim in the world mention him every time he pray and read the Quran. Yet he says he will not be mentioned. You are right. Do you see the? the, the do you see when a stupid person speak what he do? He do poo poo. This is poo poo. It's the same as Muhammad who he, when he said. Uh, Allah, he said to me, he refrained to give Quran. But you told us that the Quran is a miracle itself. How he refrained? By the second he said to you, we refrain from making miracles. He just made a miracle. Because supposedly the Quran, anything the Quran is a miracle. It's the same as the Quran says to us 
that the, uh, or the Muslim they say to us that Muhammad the angel came to him and the angel said to him read and the prophet said to him I cannot read <laughs> what what he said to him I cannot read are you sure when the angel came to Muhammad and he said to him read and Muhammad said to him I cannot read I want to ask the Muslims here who is the stupid in this story Allah or Muhammad don't Allah knows that Muhammad cannot read the answer yes he know okay then why he says to him read <laughs> I can accept this story to be true if Allah said to him read and the guy cannot read so Allah made him read because it's a miracle but Allah he said to him read but still the guy cannot read so what the point hello uh, Gracie Prince I'm yes. sorry uh, I stop you again uh, <laughs> uh, it's my really important question who is this children father real father Hatija or Maria who are, who's the father you know the, the slaves they use sleep with each other i mean they, they live alone and uh, whoever sleep around i mean those are slaves they have different life they have different uh, they, a slave they live together in like in one house in they bend in the uh, in the wealth of the person and they sleep around nobody knows nobody care because they are slaves i heard that uh, for uh, marriage uh, uh, muhammad with uh, hatija she was pregnant and that's why uh, she suddenly married with uh, Muhammad. Is it, is it true? It, it doesn't matter. I don't really care for this, really. But what, what I know... No, there that, is a such uh, information. Yeah, but, yeah, but, the, the, but, but what is important is that uh, even the marriage of Muhammad to Khadija was a fraud. All the reference says that Khadija, she made her father drunk. I know, I know. And I know in order to make him be, uh, uh, think that he agreed to marry Muhammad to her, because Muhammad was from a bad family, not as the Muslim they say he was from a noble family, the leader of Quraysh, blah 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 blah. It is the opposite to the point that the father of Khadija he says no way over my dead body. So what she, what Khadija she did, she drunk, she made him a drunk. When he's drunk, she and Muhammad they change his clothes. When he woke up in the morning, he said, "Why I'm wearing those clothes? Because those are the clothes they wear when there is an occasion, occasion like marriage or wedding." expensive clothes you know those people are better when they live in the desert so they don't wear the expensive ones except there is a occasion for it so they they leave always daily clothes for work for etc and the clothes which is for special occasion so when he woke up in the morning he said why i'm wearing those clothes she said you forgot yesterday you married me to muhammad yeah, so I even yeah. even the marriage of muhammad was a fraud all right my friend please don't call me now let me finish my topic because we oh, will be, you, we will keep. Uh, yeah, let me know later. Maybe you can ask me in the text. If if I can take the question, I will take it. If as long as it's out of the topic, please don't call me unless it is the, the topic. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, brother. Bye bye. bye bye. When we finish, guys. When we finish, we say okay, we are done. If you have a question, let me know. All right. Let us finish this. Allah said to Muhammad, "Read." Remember the the, the Quran says the Quran says, "Iqra," which means the one is talking really is Allah. Muhammad received the order through the angel, but yet the Muslim they say this is an inspiration, which is false. But the one who said the order Iqra is Allah. Okay, Allah saying to Muhammad, read. And Muhammad he says to him, I cannot read. How stupid that is. Allah saying to Muhammad read but he gave him no paper did Muh did Allah gave Muhammad paper which is in the case here Jibril did he give him a paper no did he give him a book no so why he says to him read Muhammad actually here the question should not be saying I cannot read he should say to him read what because you where is the paper in your hand at least and actually, this is what it says in Arabic, but the Muslims are stupid, do not know how to read Arabic. In Arabic, it says, Ma ana I am reading what? In Arabic, it does not say, I cannot read. That's a false translation. But the Muslim, they took it in this meaning that he said, I cannot read, because it might make 
same meaning in the same time but obviously it make more sense if he says ma ana biqari what i'm going to read and that is the more clause in the arabic language i'm going to read what you see the word read the word read is you seeing something and you read it with your eyes not reciting if the angel was saying to muhammad recite then why muhammad he says to him i cannot recite because the second you say the word recite you just said what he said which means you did recite it already <laughs> you know what i mean if the word here recite and look here the first translation they say recite that's a lie because if he said to him recite then why muhammad saying to him i cannot recite i cannot read well he just said the reward recite or oh, what he said to him one word recite muhammad saying to him i cannot say the word recite <laughs> it's a stupid religion a stupid cult it doesn't matter where you go you will find poopoo this is the cult of poopoo poopoo all over poopoo all over same time the word recite is you saying something is in your memory what recite and what is the connection between the word recite and i am not littered <laughs> and then to make it more horrible the angel he took him and he pressed him so hard why i mean what the purpose of this is squeezing the angel he hoped that there is a mayonnaise will come out of muhammad maybe the angel he hoped if i pre if i press him like that almost i killed him he will learn how to recite stupid story it is totally stupid story but muhammad he was trying to copy a story from the bible who is the person who struggled with the angel of god even the muslim muhammad himself later he caught but he changed the name supposedly jacob he was wrestling with god right God, he came to him, or he sent an angel in the shape of an of a man, and supposedly he struggled with with the, with the, with Jacob, and that is where where we see here the story. Muhammad saying that he 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 hold me so hard, so he is struggling with him, and he is telling him to read. Muhammad trying to say, I am the same as Jacob. And he's trying to fabricate a story to make it close to the story of Jacob. But it doesn't work. Yes, Ahmad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. What do you want to say to us, Ahmad? So you said you don't believe in the hadith, right? Yeah, I don't believe in the hadith. Okay. The Quran says you Muslim, you should practice muta. You said you don't believe in the hadith. Do you practice muta? No, I don't practice Mata. I'm not Shia. Never so, been Shia. but you, uh, but who, who said this is for the Shia? This is for the Sunni. Quran is the book of the Shia or the Sunni? No, uh, I didn't think the Quran speaks of Mata or promotes Mata. Oh no, the Quran is speak about the Mata chapter four, verse number twenty-four. My friend, you can open it right now and you can read it for us. Right, four twenty-four. Yeah. Uh, let's see, my. System is a little slow. Okay. Four twenty-four. Yeah. Actually, but it's uh, is four twenty-four about the muta or it's about what? And prohibited are you, uh, prohibited are you married women except those your right hand possesses the decree of Allah upon you and lawful to you are beyond these that you seek them with uh, gifts. Uh, hmm. Mere property, desiring chastity, not unlawful sexual intercourse, for so for whatever you enjoy of marriage from them, give them their due compensation as an obligation. Well, I know this verse uh, speaks of uh, uh, istamtatum, hmm. 
what god says what you have already enjoyed because you have not paid them in the past mm -hmm. so what you have already enjoyed you should okay, pay let, them let us, now let us uh, uh, ahmad let us not to waste your time and my time yeah sure do, do you accept any scholar to explain this verse pardon which Sorry? scholar you like us to read from to explain this verse because I don't believe you know, any scholar you don't believe any scholar so all the scholars agree with the christian prince and then nobody agree with you are you saying that to me well that that's different i believe in the quran no 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 no, no don't tell me that's different when i say to you name for me one muslim scholar he agree with you i'm not asking you to believe in something i'm asking you just to name don't tell me that all the muslims in the world there's not a single person agree with you well, uh, how come all the scars of Islam agree with me, but none of the scars of Islam agree with you? Well, uh, well, uh, well. Uh, okay, hold on. I will, I will speak for you. Don't speak. Don't speak. How no. come? How come Ajalain agree with with me? Don't agree with you. Uh, well, uh, okay. How come Ibn Kathir agree with me? Don't agree with you. Uh, well, um, uh, well um, how come? How come Al Qurtubi agree with me? Don't agree with you. Uh, well, uh, well. Uh, how come Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, agree with me? Hell, well, uh, well, uh, well. What well well? Uh, when you speak about religion, my friend, you have to give me proofs and reference. You don't tell me well well. I never heard of religion only one person only one person None of the scholars agree with him. I mean you are the only scholar who knows better than Islam all the Muslim scholars All of them they are stupid and you are the only one who knows what this verse mean yeah, Stupid Arabs are stupid people. They don't even know anything they are about stupid people. I agree with you. I agree with you But what is your proof that this is not about muta? I agree with you. All Muslims are stupid, including you. I've been used many times in the Quran. Allah also says, My friend, my friend, my friend, you right. want the yes. argument. You say they are stupid. There's no way a human being, he have a brain, he will believe that God will give him version because he pray for him. Only stupid yes. people believe in that. And you believe in that. Now, yes. listen, listen. Allah says in the Quran that what is your proof? Let, let us not, not to waste time. Let, let us not to waste time. What is your proof that this is not about muta? This is not about muta. It's, it's just about enjoyment between husband and wife. You should pay the wife for the enjoyment you had. You have to pay the wife for enjoyment. Guys, did you hear it? You have to pay the wife for enjoyment. Why? She is a hooker. Why you pay the women for sex? Why you pay this have wife? If she is a wife, if she is a wife, wife, why you need to pay her for the enjoyment? if you had a wife you know my friend, my friend i don't pay my wife if i have a wife because if i paid her she will kick my ass out of the house she is not a whore a woman there's no woman she respect herself she will accept to get paid because you enjoyed her only prostitution people do that why you need you to pay a woman for enjoying her sexual entertainment why you need you to pay her gift or anything huh you never gave her a gift i'm not married anyway but the, if I am married, if I Please gift, you, this is not about a gift. It says you spend your money on her. Because of what? Because she, because you enjoyed her. This is what you just read that for us yourself. Why you are gift? Well, I, I, if I give a gift, my friend, if I give to a human being a gift, I'm not going to give it in return of sex. The second you give a woman a gift of return of sex, that means she is a whore. Well, it's partnership husband and wife they live my together. friend this so, is not going a husband and wife should not give a gift to each other as a return it's not as a return well this wife is and husband they share they share together the ownership of what they have if i give her a gift is not about a payment the this quran is, says my friend it says it says I, the, listen 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 do you know what the word ujura hunna mean ujura hun what ujura hunna mean no, I don't know. Ujur in Ujur in Arabic mean wages. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. When you pay somebody wages, what does that mean? Well, well, that's that right. You have to pay them. No, 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 no. When no, no problem. If I pay somebody, if I pay you wages, what does that mean? It's mean you work for me. Is that that mean you work for me? Correct. You work for me. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. She now when I pay the women wages, that means she worked for me. What is the business she did for me? This woman, the verse Quran here speak about what? Enjoying her vagina. So you pay her wages for what? For being your wife. She's your wife. No, for enjoying for enjoying enjoying it. 
Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, I agree with okay, you. Okay, enjoying what, what? What is enjoying it mean? For mastamtatum bihi. Mastamtatum bihi. Bihi. Bihi what? The vagina. So you pay them wages. You pay them wages because they took off their panties. Well, Zibi, that, that's sure. My friend Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. Do you think he's a liar? I don't think Ibn Abbas ever existed. All of these characters. I'm ah, guys, Ibn Abbas does not exist. Okay, so if you think Ibn Abbas never been exist, how you know Muhammad was exist anyway? Well, uh, the Quran says he existed. Where? Where the Quran says he was existed? Where? Yeah, CP, I have just one simple question. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Show me one proof. Show me one proof. Show, show me one proof from the Quran that Muhammad is exist. Allah speaks to Muhammad. There's chapter Al Muhammad. Where? Where? Uh, I think chapter that's chapter forty-seven, Surah Al Muhammad. My my friend, this is the name of Muhammad. Is that his name? Yes, that is his name. Okay, Muhammad. so the, how Muhammad he said that supposedly there's a guy will come. Jesus said there's a guy will come after me. His name is Ahmad. His name is Muhammad or Ahmad? Both of them mean the same. It ah, means thank you very much. You just fell into trap. So it's a meaning. It's a title. It's not a name. Because if yeah. my name, no, no, no. If my name is a Christian prince, you cannot say something else. Unless it is not really a name, it's just a sentence means something. So you just said Ahmad and Muhammad it have the same meaning. So this yeah. is not his name. So who is the name we are talking about? Who is the person we are talking about? You do not know. Or what you know, there is a person who called, they call him the praised one. How Muhammad is a man, but he is the praised one. Explain to me. Muhammad does not mean a praised one. So what does what mean? Does hold on, hold on. Mean? So what Muhammad mean? What Muhammad mean? What Muhammad, Muhammad mean? Muhammad means one who does hamd, one who praises God. Muhammad mean the one who praises God? Yes. What does mushrik mean? Where do you get this word. from? Where do you get this from? from? Where do you get this from? Quran. Where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? Do you speak Arabic? Do you speak Arabic? Do you speak Arabic? What do you do? You speak Arabic. No, I don't speak Arabic. Okay. How you came then that Muhammad mean the one who praises God? What does mushrik mean since it's a similar word the one who associate God with God Muhammad means one who does hamd, one who praises God not true Ahmad is the one who do hamd. Muhammad is the one who people praise him not he is the one who prays okay. he is then the praised one according to your logic what does the word mushrik means what does momin means my friend you don't speak Arabic so don't question things have nothing to do with our topic well, that, I told you, Mushrik. What what is the connection between Mushrik and Muhammad? Muhammad, Muhammad is a is a is a is a is a is a continual act of somebody. He you know, people they keep praising him. The Muhammad, the Muhammad, you know, Mahmud. Who is it? Is it one of your name? Your prophet name Mahmud? No, his name is Muhammad. Really? Yeah. Are, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. What if I show you right now a list of 99 names for your prophet? 99 names. 99 names. From which book? Let's see. Here we go. Read with me carefully. I will show it in the screen. Yeah. And you tell me if I am telling the truth. <laughs> Muhammad highly praised this is this is the Muslim translation not me this is your this is your Muslim website Ahmad most commandable Hamid praising Mahmud praised Qasim Aqib Fatih Shahid Hashir Rashid Mashhud Bashir Nazir Da'in Shafin Hadin Mahd Mahin Munjin Nahin Rasul Nabi Ummi Tahami Hashimi Abtahi Aziz Haris All those names 99 names all of those are the names of Muhammad So who is Muhammad? That's absolute nonsense not nine. My friend names. nothing in Islam they're, makes they're sense don't tell me that this, don't tell me this doesn't make sense I know Islam does not make sense but this is your religion well, I, I don't agree with these people who've written who uh, care if you agree or not I don't agree too so now we are me and you and we don't agree about Islam Islam is, so me and you now we agree Islam does not make sense thank you very much now we go yes. back where is it the proof sense. that Muhammad is exist you do not give me a proof 
JP, since you go with the scholars, I have a question for you. Simple question. 47, chapter number 47, verse number 13. Explain this verse to me. According to the scholars, what since is, you have studied Islam. According, according to the to scholars. Back, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. What, 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 uh, what, uh, what verse in the Bible? What? Uh, 47 13 chapter number 47. read it for us read it for us read it for us what it says uh let me open it up hmm. <coughs> okay the verse was and how many a city was stronger than your city makkah which drove you out we destroyed them and there was no helper for them what is the understanding for this verse what does this have to do with my topic why you why you why you are changing i mean look guys look at look at the stupidity of islam what this verse have to do with all the topic we spoke for the last 30 minutes be honest with me why you are trying to change the topic what this have to do with everything we said well, see, we have answered your questions. No, you now. answered nothing. We did not come names. to a conclusion. I got you busted. You have no idea what to say. And now you jump to a verse, have nothing to do. Read the verses before it and the verse after it. It says to you what happened. Why is it so hard for you to understand? Read the holy chapter. I mean, only this verse is the problem for you. No, well, I'm just asking you a question. No, no, no. You're not asking me a question. You're changing the topic. Since you believe that I do not my friend, no, you are changing the topic. You called me, you called me supposedly to talk about what you believe. Now you yeah. quote for me from the old old testament, little tiny verse says what this is about. You can go right now, search in Google and see what the Christians say about this. This is not old testament, this is the Quran. No, no, no. What a Quran? What Quran? I did not hear you. What you said. The verse I just recited is from the Quran, not from the Old Testament. I did not hear you very well. I thought you were talking about the Old, the new, the, new, the Old Testament. Oh, I don't know. No. What say say again? I I don't know. I don't hear you guys. What he's saying? It's chapter number forty-seven, verse number thirteen. Chapter number forty-seven, verse number thirteen. Okay, what is verse saying? Tell me. I'll read it again for you. And how many a city was stronger than your city, Makkah, which drove you out? We destroyed them. And there was no helper for them. So, what is the understanding of this verse? I don't know. You tell me. What is that? No, I'm asking you. No, no, you are the one who knows. I mean, you are the one who asked the ver you, you are the one who read the verse. What you get right. from this? According to the history, the Arab history written mm. by the Arab Sunni, mm. Muhammad never left Makkah or Medina since he became prophet, and he just died in Makkah, and that's it. And he never went to any other city, and no other city was destroyed by God. But this verse says, those city other than Makkah and stronger than Makkah hmm. drove you out and God destroyed them completely. We do not find anything in the hadiths regarding this verse or if you want to understand this. Okay, verse so you something. are saying there's no other cities was destroyed. Some other cities were destroyed. Big cities bigger than Makkah. Okay. Stronger than Makkah. They right. were destroyed by God hmm. just for making prophet leave he was preaching islam he was not allowed to preach and he was asked to leave and they drove him out and allah destroyed those cities completely we do not find this in the hadith um, i mean not, you can open the uh, verse I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm still i'm still not getting your point so you are saying the quran is a corrupt book no no that hadith is corrupt a hadith is dishonest, invented. So that's why I want you to look at the verse. Uh, if you want the number, I'll give you the number again. So it will be much easier for both of us. The Quran is it true? The hadith is corrupt. Why? Why? Well, because the Quran speaks of an event that Allah has destroyed cities, those who drove Muhammad out. Okay. And the hadith never speak of any such cities that uh, any city was destroyed or so. So that's my that's what my point is. Hmm. So the Quran speak about Allah destroying cities of those who drove Muhammad out of of, uh, yeah. of, of that city, right? Yeah, like hmm. maybe some big city. In okay, Egypt, let me ask you a question then. Was was uh, was Mecca destroyed? No, Mecca was not destroyed, and the verse does not speak of Mecca being destroyed. So no, you you just said the verse saying that the the cities who drove Muhammad out. Allah destroy them. Yeah. Okay. So Makkah was one of them, isn't it? But Makkah was not destroyed. But Makkah is not included. My friend, my friend, why Makkah is not included? 
Well, because Makkah was later on conquered by Prophet. Makkah was to be conquered. My friend, you just that said you just said it. you just said that the cities who drove Muhammad away, they yeah. they are destroyed. Yes, other than Makkah. That's what the verse Well, there's no other said. city other than Mecca. There's other city that means the Quran is lying. Which city drove Muhammad away? Uh, Islam spread in all of Middle East. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. This is not Muhammad. I'm talking about the person of Muhammad. Which city drove Muhammad away except Mecca? There's no other city. Well, the city is no, not named. My, fr uh, my friend, my friend, you see, you put yourself in trouble. In the beginning, I thought you are asking about the Old Testament. And now yeah. you are talking about the Quran. And you are quoting for me ever saying that there is no other city more strong than the city which I destroy the people of that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, which city Allah destroy the people for kicking Muhammad out? Muhammad did not was not kicked out from anywhere in the Middle East because simply he never lived there except in Mecca or or Yathrib, two cities. Well, that that's what the Hadith says, but the Quran. No, says no, my friend. No, no, my friend. My friend. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me the hadith the Quran does not say well if the Quran say and then you cannot find that in the Quran That means the Quran is not a perfect book because when the Quran speak about Destroying city, but the Quran cannot provide us with the name of the city. It's mean there is something missing Well, I, I agree with the Quran. I will not go with that my friend I, I understand you agree with the Quran But when I say to you when I say to you the Quran speak of city be destroyed cities who kick Muhammad away yeah. Don't you think the Quran is missing the point by not listing the names of those cities? How people will know now what happened? I mean, why you are reporting for me the event which you cannot even list the names of those cities? Well, Allah has not listed those cities. Uh, it's up to Allah. Okay, Allah did not list the cities and the people did not list the city, which means there's no cities. Because there's no way that those people who they were attended in the time of Muhammad, they don't know the yes, cities and there's no event the and there's no is, event the and I mean let me ask you what is the yeah. point why Muslims will hide the names of those cities who Allah destroyed there's no point correct yeah there is a point they will hide why why, why? they are they, 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 they are bad the Muslims they are bad Muslims all the Muslims are bad not even one of them remember or recite to us a story where one of those cities destroyed because they kicked Muhammad away what is the benefit of the Muslims all the Muslims in the time of Muhammad they were bad and they are doing conspiracy against Islam yeah, yeah, they, they're doing conspiracy against Islam. Why do they we do that? Why? Okay, so now how you know that the Quran now you receive, which is coming from the same Muslims? Look, look what you are doing, my friend. Look what you are doing. You are accusing the same ones who gave you the Quran to be doing conspiracy against Islam. So how you trust the Quran? You receive the, the Quran you receive today is coming from who? The Quran you have in your in your hand is coming from who? Quran came from Allah. Allah is the one who is guarding the Quran. That's not true. That's not true. The Quran never received by Allah. If you open the Quran right now in, in the front of you, you will see it says in page number A that this Quran is according to recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation of 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 of, of all the way to Muhammad and then to Jibreel. Okay. Now all those names, the eight or nine names in the beginning until we arrive to Muhammad, including Hafs and Asim, Hafs accused by Muslim to be a fraud and a thief. Asim accused to be a fraud and a thief and a liar and any hadith come from Asim and from Hafs both are rejected for they are liars. All the hadiths are okay. lies. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you this stupidity in Islam. How you refuse this person to give you a hadith but you accept him to give him Quran. I don't get it. This Hafs is accused by Muslim to be a fraud. You are reading the Quran right now. The Quran you have is according to the recitation of Hafs. Hafs is the son of Asim, his stepson. Asim, Asim is accused to be a fraud too. So now we have the last two sources of the Quran, which you Muslims are reciting right now, coming from two fraud people. How do you trust it? His hadith is not accepted. Asim, any hadith is coming from Asim is rejected. Any hadith is coming from Hafs is rejected. Why? Because he's a fraud. He's a liar. Okay. So he is a fraud. He's a liar. We take his Quran. We reject no, his hadith. We accept his Quran. Quran. Why would you take his Quran? And you, you tell me. You tell me why you take his Quran. You tell me why you are taking his Quran. 
This is the Quran. This is the Quran of Hafs, my friend. This is not the Quran of Uthman. The one who gave you this Quran is not Uthman. Is the recitation of Hafs, which means Hafs can change, play whatever he want. So how we can trust? How we can trust? Okay, you just hold on, hold on. You are the one who said. Listen, you are the one who said. You all those who exist in the time of Muhammad, they are doing something bad against Islam. So the Hadith is not trustworthy and it's bad. Okay, but the Hadith is collected. Almost in the same time of the Quran being collected, no Quran was written by Prophet. Where, where is the, where is the book of Muhammad? Do you have it? No, I don't have it. So what do you mean here? Written by the Prophet? What are you talking? If, if it's written by the Prophet, why you are saying in that Quran you have? It says this Quran is written according to recitation of Hafs, according to recitation of Hasim. Recitation. My friend, it says it says there according to the recitation of Hafs. According to recitation of Asim, according to recitation of etc., 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 etc. So you don't have a book, you have recitation. If you have a book, you do not need all those recitations. You say this is the Quran according to the Prophet Muhammad, and that's it. But because my friend, you don't have the book of you, listen, listen, you don't have the book of Uthman, you don't have the book of Muhammad. You have recitation of many people who came long after Muhammad. Asim was exist, Asim and Hafs exist more than 200 years after Muhammad. Is Tashkil part of the Quran? Did Allah reveal the no, Quran with Tashkil? No, there is no Tashkil and there is no dots. Well, the dots were there, I believe, because without dots, no, there was no dots. No, there was no dot. Those are no those you are addition. Those are addition by a guy. He is not even an Arab. The one who add the dots and add the vowels to the Arabic letters is not even an Arab, and that make the Quran more stupid because how you can read it? You just said it's impossible to read Arabic without the dots. And yeah, that without the dots, it's and, not even possible even for an Arab. It's sure. Yeah, you are right. This is why. How we can know? Not only this. What if I show the you that your prophet? Listen, listen. Dots, if if, if ha, you have you ever heard, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad, have you ever heard of somebody? Uh, did you see? With my respect to all people, did you see somebody? He have a, a because he's old. He lost his teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you think somebody he lost his teeth can recite Quran correctly? No, it will be uh, it will be a little difficult. Okay, guys, did he say it's going to be difficult? Do you know that Muhammad he have no teeth? Come on, what? Huh? <laughs> this to me. I mean, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. All Islamic books books confirm that Muhammad his teeth was broken. All his the the first all the cabinet from top and down are broken. The the, the the pagans the pagans they throw a rock at Muhammad, and because of that Muhammad he lost all his teeth. So how you can learn Quran from a guy he he cannot recite Arabic words correctly? Yeah, the pagans in Taif, I believe. Huh? Pagans in Taif, right? It doesn't matter where, my friend. They they broke his teeth. Listen, CP. Let me tell you something. Just listen. No, 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 no. You know you listen. Did they break his yeah. teeth or not? Hmm? No, no. No, guys, read with me. Nonsense. Read with me, guys. Read with me. Read with me. <laughs> in on the day of Ahad, this is this is in the beginning of Islam. It's not even like after May. In the beginning, this is the beginning of the Quran. In the day of Ahad, a molar of the messenger of Allah, S W A, was broken and he was wounded. The blood started pouring down of his face. And we can find you from the book of Asira, the book of Al Bidaya and Nihaya Ibn Kathir, everywhere. The, te the, te the teeth of Muhammad is gone. How this guy can recite Quran? Let me recite to you the Quran the same as Muhammad without teeth. How you can do the Quran? DP, can I say something? No, no, you tell me, you tell me, be honest with me. How somebody he lost all his teeth, he can give you Quran of Allah. Why Allah at least give how come Allah did not protect his teeth? I mean, Maybe there was you are the one who the said that listen, listen, there was there was no dots, there was no dots, there was no dots. My friend, sometime sometime your voice goes. I don't hear you. Your voice is getting from my side. I'm not, I'm not sure why. I don't understand you. Uh, okay, okay. uh you know, you you know, in Islam, the, the Arabic has no dots. Have no valves, and we have a prophet. He lost all his teeth. How in the world you Muslim can understand what he's saying? I have hard time to understand Zakir Naik, who have full teeth. 
How we can understand the prophet? He is reciting. He is reciting a language, reciting the words of God, but yet he have no teeth. CP, the non-Muslims infiltrated Islam and invented hadiths and history. It's all a lie. My friend, all all of Islam is a lie. I agree with you. I mean, who? Uh, okay. But, but, is a lie. By saying, by saying that, look, 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 Ahmad, Ahmad. By saying that, you told me in the text you pray five times, correct? Yeah. Okay, where in the Quran it says you pray five times? Which Allah is missing, Fajr Zulhar? My friend, do you where, think Maghrib is mis missing? Where in the Maghrib. Quran? Where in the Quran it says you pray five times? It doesn't say anywhere. It doesn't even. So say why you are praying? Time. So why you are praying five times? Because it mentions in various timings that at this time you have to pray. At where this where, time where it's mentioned? Where it's mentioned? Where? Where? Like, let me give you a surah. Hmm. It's seventeen seventy eight. Okay. What seventeen seventy eight says? Go. Gives read. you even how long your salah should be. My friend, the me, Maghrib light speaks of the Maghrib, which you okay. think is missing from the five. Uh, okay. Yeah, which is extra. Okay, show me now. I'm, I'm I'm waiting for you to show me where in the Quran it says. Seventeen seventy eight. Should I read it to you? Hmm. Read it for me. Yeah, go ahead. Establish Salah at the decline of the sun until the darkness of the night, and okay. also the Quran of dawn. Indeed, the recitation of the dawn. Okay, is how many times? Okay, how many times? Based on this verse. Nowhere. Uh, it doesn't say even one time. It says from decline of the sun until the dark. That's not a time. That's not a time. time. Okay. The from the, the time dawn. you wake up to the time you sleep, you sleep Muslim, you pray all day long. Tell me no. how, where in from the Quran, the my friend, my friend, let me teach you, let me teach you your religion. You do not know. In your religion, but, the Quran, the Quran says it clearly that you pray only three times. Read with me carefully. Yeah. This is your Quran. And this is not my you can give me your own translation as you wish which translation you like You can go with Sahih international it's easy. Okay Chapter 11 1 14 read for me the translation you wish Sorry, I don't see the translation on the screen. No, no, no you read for me in, in this website They have only four they have Yusuf uh, Yusuf Ali Shakir big tell you choose uh, which one is it? Chapter, which one? Huh? Which chapter? 11, 114. 11, 114. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it says, and establish prayer at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Indeed, good deeds do away with misdeeds. This okay. is a reminder for how those. Many time, how many times those will make? The two end of the day and the approach of the night. How many times they will make? Yeah. Huh? Three. Okay, thank you. So it's three times. Then, then what about seventeen, eighteen? Where it, it says, doesn't say. Uh, it say the one you chose for me. It doesn't say anything. There's nowhere in the Quran. My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. Are you saying to me in the Quran one verse saying five and one verse saying three? Okay, what do you think about Surah Al Mudassar? Yeah, my friend, my friend. Then, no, let us make it clear. Are you saying there's verses in the Quran saying five times and there's verses in the Quran saying you pray three? Uh, what do you think about chapter? Mudassar? Don't tell me, don't think. Answer the question Are you trying to yeah. say to me to prove to me that a verse in the Quran say you pray, you should pray three times, other verse saying you should pray five times? Either you say yes or you say no, it's three. Well, uh, if you calculate, how don't many tell times me, well, here we go, we go back. Well, if you calculate, you give me the answer. Are you trying to say to me one verse in the Quran says you just admitted that this verse is says it three times? Everybody heard you now. And you are trying to quote for me other verses now is the other verses will help you to prove to me that you should pray five times Yes, this is what you are trying to do So now come we can come to a conclusion that your Quran is a book of contradiction one verse It says confirming that it's a three time you pray and other verses saying you pray five times And then there's a six time as well if you read Surah al -Mundas. my friend so give me a conclusion is this verse is wrong no, the verses are correct. Okay, is the other verses right? Well, if you calculate the don't Salah tell me if we calculate. You keep saying if I we calculate here, the Quran is so clear. It says the pray the two end of the day and the approach of the night. We ask you how many that will the time that will make. You said the three. Thank you very much. So now this verse in the Quran confirmed that a Muslim prayer is going to be three time. Thank you. Now, the other verses you quote for me, you keep saying five and six. Maybe we'll get seven. 
so now is this verse is the one we should follow or the verses you are saying they are making it even six we should follow all the verses all right if we now, combine all of them we get i six. challenge you in the front of everybody to show me one verse says you pray five times if you show There's me no that i will apologize from you there is no verse thank you very much there's no verse says you pray five times so why you pray five times because the quran gives timings the quran does someone. not give timing as you see you just told me it between and this between this I'm Ab abdul listen nine. it is between this time to this time and it is a three time i asked you what this verse mean to you you are the one who said to me it's mean three time correct according to the verse it says three times all right yeah. thank you very much so it cannot be in a, 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 more than three times as as long it's a clear it says it is three time it's it cannot be other options that's it okay you want me to overlook rest of the quran just uh, because my friend I look, have look what we are doing look what we are doing i ask you about the muta you said the muta is not a true yeah. all the muslim understood that this verse is about the muta and the hadith confirmed that I ask you about how many times you pray in the Quran. You say this is not a true. It is not. It's not three times. It's five times. Now I showed you the verse. You said it is saying three times. I ask you to show me. I ask you to show me. I ask you to show me one verse speaking about yeah. praying five times. You could not. Yeah. Why you are going by the assumption, not by the confirmation? This one is confirming to you that it is a three. Other verses are also confirmation that you should should also no no time. no no it does not confirm anything it does not confirm anything well to you maybe it doesn't confirm anything but uh, what do you mean to me not that, that okay no it, it does not confirm to you because you could not bring me one chapter in the Quran say you pray five times there's no such words uh, which says pray five times you have to calculate them okay here we go if we calculate them that will make them according to you five but here it says a three yeah but what if you calculate surah al mudassar as well my friend let us say for the sake of argument we calculate all of them and we come to a conclusion that allah he said to pray 100 times what we would yeah. do with this verse saying that you pray three times only what you would do with this well, the, the verse is just incomplete without rest of the Quran. My friend, what complete here is saying you pray the two yeah. end of the day and the approach of the night is simple, it's clear. What should I do with another verse that's giving me some other timing? What should I do with that verse? Uh, that means there is a contradiction. <coughs> if there is Why any, not combine them? If there is any, but I don't see in any verse where is it says any contradiction with this. I think they are the same. Where is the verses saying that you pray five times? You could not find it because even if you calculate them, it doesn't say five times. It's still it's three times. Yeah, yeah, well, see, be no. So comments. you are following. You are. Yeah. This, is, this is make it clear. You are following the hadith. You are not following the Quran. Let me ask you. Yeah. What is the practice a Muslim should not practice, which is coming from the hadith? Pardon, sir. You don't get your question. What is the practice you reject Muslims do, which you think it's coming from the Hadith? Something Muslim they do, you think it is not should be to be followed in Islam? Yeah, like <clears throat> the Sunnah, like uh, even in the Salah, as soon as they go into sitting position, they start committing shirk. They start calling upon Muhammad, which is a shirk, which they should not do. Hmm. What what, what, they, what they do when they when they pray? What they say. As soon as they, they sit in the salah, they say Atahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. That's fine. Assalamu alayka ayyuhun nabiyu. That means salam to you, Prophet. Okay, and? That, that's shirk, that's it. So if you say Assalamu alayka ayyuhun nabi, this is shirk. Yeah, Assalamu alayka ayyuhun nabi. Why? So, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. If Allah Himself, He pray on Muhammad and He salute Muhammad, so why that is shirk? Well, Allah is not doing shirk. Allah can see that because the prophets are alive in heaven Allah is in contact with them and secondly prophet what, was what alive do, what do you mean what do you mean my friend well, my friend my friend when Allah he said Allah he ordered the Muslims in the Quran to pray and to salute Muhammad where does he say that okay here we go if we go in Allah <laughs> 
Yeah, let's get to that words. Uh, by the way, uh, you asked me some questions some time ago, which I have an answer. I will. Let us finish this, and you can. Yeah. Yeah, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuha alladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Chapter thirty-three, yeah. verse number fifty-six. Allah, He order you Muslims to pray on Muhammad and salute him. <coughs> this is Quran. Well, that's a bad translation. I know, I agree. This is not only bad translation, this is a false translation. I don't read translation, yeah. I read in Arabic. Yeah. Okay, uh, and how you and how you know that this is a false translation if you do not know Arabic? <laughs> uh just hold a second. We're gonna read something. Okay, I'll translate the verse for you. It's okay, uh, 36, ahead. right? Mm. Let me get the Arabic for you. Mm. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yasalluna ala nabiyya ayyuhal lazina amanu sallu lahi wa salimu taslima. Indeed, Allah and his angels are in contact with the Prophet. So you who have believed, contact the Prophet. And submit and accept. <laughs> Contact. What are yeah. you? Well, hold on, hold on. The word you saloon, the word you saloon, me came to be contact. What is that? Allah is calling his phone. What do you mean contact? Allah and angels were in contact with the Prophet. Ah, okay, hold on. But 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 where is the word contact coming from? The word in Arabic is you saloon. Yeah, you saloon, salat, salu. Okay, what salat mean? Contact. What salat mean? Allah is in contact with everybody. My friend, Salat does not mean contact. Salat means pray. Okay, I've got a verse for you. This don't second. change, don't change, don't change. Salat, it, it have one meaning, pray. And I can show you tons of verses in the Quran saying the word Salat. Always it's come and it means pray. Do you agree? Okay. Uh, CP, just uh, listen to this. Ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmat. Okay, so what does it mean? Salawat a prayer, a, a, for those, there's a prayer to them from their Lord. Okay, Allah prays to Allah, that's salawat on them. Yes, so he pray on them, he pray on them. Pray. Yes, yeah, Allah is praying to them. No, he is praying on salawatun alayhum. You said alayhum, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, no, uh, yeah, alayhim salawatun. Yeah, alayhim, which means there's a prayer. On them, which means Allah, He prayed like the same one. You know, Christians, like if you see Christians, they pray like He put His hand over your shoulder or over your head and He pray for you, you know. So He pray, He pray on you. So Allah, He put His hand on you and He pray on you. How Allah, He pray? How Allah, He pray? How Allah, He pray? If He is God, it means Allah is in contact with them, my friend. Contact with them what? It says you salli, you salli, salat. The word salat means pray. And you are the one who said the translation is false. Yeah, are you are Ladina Amanu. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Let, let me ask you, let me ask you, let me ask you. Is the Quran was made for a certain time or for all time? All time. All time. So you just said to me in the beginning, uh, when you said that they are doing shirk, when they, 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 they say the salute to Muhammad, that they how yeah. they can do that if Muhammad is dead, correct? Yeah. Okay. When Allah He said to you in this chapter, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, all those who you believe, I will go with your translation, contact yeah. him and salute him. Yeah. And you just said the Quran is for all time. Muhammad now is dead. How you can how you can time. contact him and salute him? Huh? But the Prophet is dead now. You are the, the one Quran, who said, I asked ask you a second ago, Prophet. is the Quran for all time or only for this time? You said for all time, remember. I will answer you, just let me say something. Allah also says in the Quran, when you go consult a prophet, present him with charity, present present him with something. Even if you don't, Allah has forgiven you. So, what about that verse? How do I present prophet? It's charity? very simple. Your prophet, your prophet is a thief. He is forcing you to pay him before you meet him. Whatever the reason is, how can I pay him now? According to the verse. No, no, you cannot pay him now. You cannot pay him now. But Muhammad, he made Same that verse to use you at that time. Him. You see, if, Muh if Muhammad came back to life, he would be happy now to take money from you, no problem. But Muhammad at that time, this is the proof that Muhammad is a fabricator because why you need to pay a prophet of God to meet him in private? Because he was doing God's work all the time. He was busy. He could not uh, earn... My friend, I'm busy too. I'm busy too. Did you pay me to talk to me? 
And Allah says Allah has My friend, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you pay me? Did you pay me? My name is a Christian prince. Did you pay me yes. to speak to me? No. Okay. Why I am not a prophet of God, I still do my service for free. Muhammad is a prophet for God. He need to be paid in order to speak to you. It's not necessary. What it's, necessarily? It's no, it says, it says, it says, it says, no, it says, it says you should do that. If you, if you don't do that, okay, may Allah forgive you. He's made him feel that guilty to the point, okay, it's like you need to be forgiven now because you did not give me money and you are the one who said that. Why somebody in order to speak to a prophet, did Jesus get paid? No. Okay. Just hold a second. Okay. Uh, so why, uh, why, why Muhammad is asking for payment? No, he's not asking for payment. It's Allah. Ah, Allah. <laughs> Why Allah? He is saying such a thing. I mean, what is the what is the connection between guidance oh, and asking? To... No, my friend. My, no, my friend. Allah. There's no way God will do that because God in the Quran in chapter 30, 36 verse number twenty one says, "Ittabi'u man ajra wa humul muhtadun." Chapter thirty six verse number twenty one says, "Follow thee who ask you not for wages." The Quran says Allah. that the Quran, the Quran, do you know he's talking about what? He's talking about the apostle of Jesus, specifically Paul and Peter and 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 the, and the, and the John, according to the Muslims. So Allah is saying, follow those, obey those, follow those who ask no reward of you. Muhammad's not asking for a reward. No, you have to pay him. He's asking. You have it's to pay him, my friend. Inside what Muhammad will do with the money? I mean, hold on, hold on. If if a person, if a person, if I say to to a person, go and yeah. make donation for the poor. You do not need to give me the money. Give it to the poor. Is Muhammad, Muhammad homeless? Huh? Is Muhammad, Muhammad homeless? Was, Is Muhammad, Muhammad homeless? My, my friend, it's so clear. You are the one who quote the verse for me. You need to give him something before you meet him, which means it's in return. In return yeah. for a service, so this is, was a payment for him. And Allah also says, if you do not pay, that's fine. Allah has already forgiven you. So you what do you mean it's not fair? You, you you made them feel guilty now. He is saying to them, well, you know what? If if uh, if you don't pay me, may Allah forgive you. You are you are making people feel guilty. So nobody will come to his house without bringing some zucchini with him. Well, if Muhammad, he wouldn't have said that. He my said friend, he my friend, why even all. Muhammad, why Allah even is saying that to Muhammad? Muhammad, he will take the fifth from every attack. Muhammad will take the booty, the best of the booty. Muhammad being favored in everything. Why Muhammad, he need that? Why I what cannot I cancel did, in the, did you notice it says if you can if you cancel in the in, in the do consultation in private in private so who is the one will pay if it is a consultation in private so Muhammad he made himself like a clinic so anyone will come to me in a private this is a private service you have to give the prophet some money otherwise it's not really appropriate so now the Muslim they heard that anyone who will come to the Prophet he will feel guilty even if you say to him okay well if you don't have I mean obviously the one who don't have what he can do so but but why a prophet of God he insists that before you see him you have to give him something well that that's charity what other what is charity my friend did do you have to, I am I am I, okay let are you are, are you saying to me I my moral is better than your prophet. I am a Christian prince. You don't need to pay me in order to talk to me. See, and I will not say to you, and I will not say to you, may God forgive you because you did not make a donation for me. I will not say that to you because this is an insult. I'm humiliating. I am humiliating you because you did not give me a donation. So you call me, you say to me, I say to you, did you give me donation? You say no. You say, okay, you know what? Uh, God, he says, who, who you believe before you consult with the Christian prince, give him a donation. But if you don't, Allah may, uh, may Allah forgive you. This is humiliating for you. I don't have money. Why are you are mentioning that? A person who serve God, he should not ask for return. Even. People, they do that voluntarily. You see, here we go. I am here sitting for how many hours? I have a donation. People, they make donation, but if they want. I don't keep saying, hey guys, I will not do if you don't do donate for me. 
I will not yes, talk to you if you don't donate for me. Do the it's guy, do the guy who called me before you, he donate to me? No. The guy who called before, donate to me? No. The guy who called before, donate to me? All those who call me, actually, none of them donate to me. But yet I talk to them, I spend my time with them, and I don't ask them to make a donation. So why a prophet of God, who is not like me, I am just a normal man. I need, I need to make a living, my friend. Listen, I need to make a living. I need to, I need support. Muhammad, he have the fifth of the booty. Muhammad, Muhammad, he steals shoes. Muhammad, he steals donkeys. Muhammad, he steals women. Muhammad have a lot of money. Why he need people to pay him before they meet him? He distributed everything to the poor. My friend, this is a lie. This is a lie. How a person he is poor can open thirteen houses? He never had thirteen houses. What do you mean he true. never have? All all the wives he have, where he have them? Where in the shelves? By the by the way, CP, this is this discussion is never ending. I've got something to say. You asked me a question once that why is Allah misleading you? Because it's all up to Allah. Allah decides whom He guides, whom He misguides. Am mm. I right? Mm. Okay. So uh, your question was why? The answer is from the Quran. I'll just give this answer, then I'll have to go. If you look at chapter number eight, verse number twenty-three. Mm. Number eight, twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. What? Tell me what. Uh, th that's the answer I would like you to read. I don't see an answer there. Uh, chapter number eight, verse number twenty-three, not sixteen. My friend, I did not say anything. I, did, I say I don't see the answer there. <laughs> uh, which verse is that? <coughs> they have made their oaths a uh, scream. No, uh, chapter number eight. I'm not opening the verse yet. You said chapter number eight, verse number twenty-three. I understand. Yeah, but I don't see the answer there. Where is the answer? I'll read it to you. Hmm. Had Allah known any good in them, He would have made them here. And if He had made them here, they would still have turned away while they were refusing. So that means Allah knows no good in them. Whom okay. Allah let me let me give you the answer from your Quran. Show you how it's stupid your Quran. Uh, I'm not insulting, but listen to me carefully. Isn't it your Quran is the one He said He is the one who who blocked our ears and our eyes so we don't understand? yeah <laughs> so how he is the one who blocked our ear hearing and our eyes and our heart and then he says if he knew that they, they, they uh, there is there is good in their hearing and there is good in their in their uh, 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 in them then i will uh, uh, you know i will help but but he he you know if he knew they have any good on them allah knows no khair in them allah knows no good in them okay so but hold on hold on hold on hold on when your prophet he said in the chapter of Al Kafirun, yeah, what he said in the Al Kafirun, okay, this verse Muhammad he said to who? It's a general verse, it's no, okay, no problem, no, no, but but what when he said that, he said to who? Well, I don't believe that stuff, it's My just friend, a general, no, word. you believe, tell me, okay, give me an answer, Muhammad, when he spoke to the Kafirun, who is the Kafirun around him? The kafirs must be whoever mm. the kafirs were. Who is the kafirun who was around Muhammad at that time? Is that the tribe of Quraysh? No, I think uh, there's a surah about the Quraysh. The Quraysh converted. My friend, my friend, all the Quraysh. ones around Muhammad converted, and this is a, this should prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. He said to them, "Say, I believe not in what you believe, and I will not believe in what I believe." But later, all of them convert either by sword or, or, or you know, there's nobody left. All the Arabian Peninsula became Muslims. Yeah, they became Muslims. So, that's so, the so the, the verse is a lie. How he said to them, "You will not believe in what I believe, and I will not believe in what you believe." And then he says to them, "Okay, my, my friend, my friend, how he say that? If all the Arabian Peninsula became Muslims, with no exception, not all of it, 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 Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad." He did not leave anyone in the Arabian Peninsula is not a Muslim. No, that's not true. That is I'm a big, uh, my friend. Come on, listen, listen. Give me, give me a proof that in the Arabian Peninsula there was one person left Muslim after Muhammad became victorious. At no, least after see, before there he are even places in Saudi Arabia where the non-Muslims live. There's, there's zero. There is. There is zero. There is no. Non-Muslim in Saudi Arabia, the one who they are there now, they are working workers, visa, work visa, as a slaves. But those are not Muslim, Saudi. There is not a single. My Arab. friend, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. There is zero atheist 
zero Christian, zero Jews, zero Hindus, zero Buddha, zero any religion beside Islam in Saudi Arabia. Don't lie. Don't lie. Well, it's a shame. Don't do lie. Don't lie. don't lie. My friend, don't lie. Well, how can you survive then in Middle East? I, who's, who, told you I am, who told you I'm from Saudi Arabia? No, you're, you're from Middle East. I am saying the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad was yeah. not where I'm, I was living. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I never said I'm from Saudi Arabia. You have uh, Christians. My in friend, Egypt. my friend, people yeah. who they are, people of the book, they paid the jizya. But those are not from Arabian Peninsula because Muhammad, he said, I am going to expel all the Christians, all the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. And that's what he did. That's a hadith that was special. My friend, the Jews. my friend, show me where one Christian, he is a Saudi, he lives in Saudi Arabia. Show me one church in Saudi Arabia. Well, it's different now. What different it's now? Different. I mean, don't tell me what different now. There's no churches. Muhammad, he destroyed everything, he killed everybody. He expelled everybody. Yeah, well, don't it, lie. Uh, don't lie. Nice the, Muhammad is a fascist. Muhammad is a fascist man. He is a Nazi man. He's the same as a Hitler. He did not like the Jews. He killed the Jews. He did not like the Christian. He killed the Christians. And nobody left there except him. Now, show me here the verse in front of us. Oh, you reject faith. All of you. I worship not what you worship. No, you will worship what I worship. But all of them, all of them, Omar al Khattab, Omar al Khattab, he became a Muslim. Khad al Walid, Khad al Walid, he used to fight against Muhammad. He became a Muslim. So, how Muhammad he says to them, You will not believe in what I believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, and later they believe in what he believe. I believe it's just a general. It's a false prophecy. No, it's a false prophecy. Even if, no problem. I, I actually, I, I thank you for saying it's a general. It's a general. So, when you it's, say, you when you say you will not believe, he's speaking all of them in general, will not believe. But the Quran confirmed when the victory of Allah came, people they, they enter into religion of Islam by waves. So if yes, the major, if he is saying the majority in general, because when you say in general, my friend, when you say when you say in general, do you mean the majority will not believe or the minority will not believe? Yeah. Well, someone's waiting for me. I have to go now. No, so no, no. I'll answer me. Answer me. Time. When you say in general, do you mean the majority or the minority they will not believe? Majority, but the believers. The, the majority will believe so when I say in yeah. general I'm when I say in general the major the, the will not believe I mean the minority <laughs> I never heard, I never heard of this before I thought always when you say in general you mean the majority and the minority is an exception I don't think it's about majority or minority no it must be it must be it must be because when I you are the one who use the word generally when you say general you mean the majority it's a general words like yes. when I say general, I'm speaking to the population, all the population. So in the population, maybe there's some people they have exception. As an example, I say everybody have to pay tax for sure, except the foreigners. Well, okay. maybe we can discuss tax next time. I've got got to go because someone's waiting. It was nice speaking to you. My friend, no problem. You are welcome to call anytime you oh, wish. No problem. See how the Muslims, they try to pick up their cherries as they wish to save the ass of Muhammad from being humiliated. So this guy, he don't want to believe in the Hadith. Why? Because there is conspiracy against the Prophet. But the Quran is no better. And, you know, when he quote for me, he says to me, what the Quran, the Quran said, that if he, uh, if Allah, he know any good on you, he will not be, uh, he, he will not be silenced your, your heart. But that is stupid because the Quran is saying he is the one who mute me. My name is Paul. I was born and raised in a Muslim nation. Actually, my birth name wasn't Paul. But after I left Islam, I sensed that God was calling me to take the gospel to my own people, just like the Apostle Paul did. So I changed my Muslim name. Growing up, I never heard the gospel or saw a Bible. I was raised to be a Muslim and to die as a Muslim. Sometimes I would ask my dad questions about our religion, like, why does Allah only hear my prayers if I pray in the direction of Mecca? He would just say, don't ask questions. This is Islam. But after my wife and I moved to Chicago, in 2002, 
I met a former Muslim named Muhammad Ghazali. He gave me a book he'd written about his testimony. It changed my life. I had heard of Christians converting to become Muslims before, but I'd never heard of a Muslim converting to Christianity. He gave me his first copy to read and in Arabic Bible. The entire book was a list of references from the Quran and ancient Muslim historical books, which exposed many shocking things about Islam. He claimed I would see many contradictions if I just studied for myself. One example from his book is the claim that the Prophet Muhammad married a six years old girl when he was over 50 years old and that he consummated that marriage when she was nine. This was impossible for me to accept. Today, a man would go to jail for that. Another claim was that Muhammad was married to 10 women at the same time. If true, this would mean he was breaking the law of his own religion that allowed for a maximum of four wives. There were many claims I couldn't believe. But Ghazali was wise. He included quotes from many ancient Muslims' books as support and give references so anyone could go check for themselves. But I didn't have all these books Ghazali quoted from. They are very expensive. So I used Google. And the very first search brought up many Arabic websites with all the reference books and it confirmed the contradictions about Islam. But I was very skeptical. I thought it could be all a conspiracy by Americans and Jews to deceive Muslims. Ghazali was very bold. He kept calling me, asking me if I had any questions about his book, asking me if I wanted to get together to discuss it. But I told him I wasn't ready yet. You see, I was thinking I'm going to keep investigating this so I can prove him wrong. So because I couldn't trust what was on the internet, I made a list of all the Muslim books he quoted from and went to a large Muslim bookstore in Chicago. I left that store with two boxes full of books and I only bought copies that were printed in Saudi Arabia because I was thinking American publishers could have added errors to trick Muslims. At home, I checked each reference one by one, and they all match. I could not believe it. It was impossible. Islam was full of lies. And this caused a lot of stress for me. I had been a happy Muslim. Why was God giving me this struggle? So I studied and prayed and kept searching for the truth. Then at one point, I bowed down on the floor and I said, Creator of heaven and earth, I know you are real. I believe in you, but I don't know who you are. Please reveal to me who you really are. If you are Allah and if Islam is true, then I will spend my entire life committed to you and to converting many Americans to Islam. But if you are the Christian God, I will serve you for my entire life. I kept reading and studying. Three things especially touched me from the Bible. First, that Jesus commanded his followers to love and pray for their enemies. Second, that God loves both the righteous and the sinner. And the third, that he wants his people to worship him as their father. These things are not in Islam. I had never heard anything like this before. After months of struggling and praying and studying both religion deeply, I finally came to the conclusion that Islam is Muhammad-made religion. 
I admitted my need for forgiveness and put my faith in Christ as my Savior and Lord. At first, my wife was very upset. In her opinion, our marriage was over. But after four months, she trusted in Christ as well. She was the first person I helped to lead to Jesus. Since we have gone on to use the latest internet technology and social media to share Christ with tens of thousands of Muslims around the globe, especially those in countries close to missionaries and private chat rooms, away from the watchful eyes of family members and governments, our team in the Middle East and North Africa are having hundreds of conversations every month with Muslims, seekers, and skeptics. They are also monitoring Arabic believers who desperately need discipleship and fellowship. I'm blessed to have been rescued from Islam, and like the Apostle Paul, I have the privilege to take the truth to my own people. I praise the Lord for that.